All right, everybody, welcome back to the Roundup. Delighted, as always, to have a new guest on, and it's the main man himself, Tommy Malloy. Tommy, how are you getting on, mate? Brand new, mate. All good, thanks, Paul, yourself? Oh, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Uh, just looking through this week, we are the South of Scotland Cup. No league fixtures this week, so we'll touch on games for the South, and then we'll maybe get a wee chat about the, the leagues, if we have the time. No bother. I was looking... Tommy, I was saying to you before we came on there, 23 games between West and with the West teams playing the South and East teams, 15 wins. And the games that they lost, well, a few of them were on penalties and stuff like that. So it shows, as always, is what we all know is the West is much stronger. But a couple of games caught my eye. Solcoats playing against Musselbra, who Musselbra stood in the East Premier. Solcoats, obviously down the bottom half of the fourth division and the other one I mentioned you've got, where is it? Where is it? So many games to get through because I'm not going to reading them out. Gallo losing 2-1 to eh, Socky who are second in the East Premier. Yeah. That's two two results for me, obviously the West teams have lost but that's two results where you're looking and saying is that just fortunate or does that show how much stronger the West setup is even our lower teams who I'm not saying it's Kello and Solcoats are as good as muscle brand Socky. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But does it show the fact that the teams in the West there's just a, a much stronger base of teams? I would say that the West is stronger, mate, but you probably need to give a bit of credit to Solcoats and that as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I know Stevie Wilson's in there and he's maybe steady the ship a wee bit. So on paper before that game, you're saying muscle brand should run away with a fixture, but Probably need to give him teams a wee bit of credit as well, mate, for staying in the game so long. But going back to what you were saying, the West is proven to be a lot stronger, I think, as well. Um, was it Lards that played last week in the Scottish against, was it Socky? Aye. I think maybe on paper that was going to be one that you were not sure about, and I think Lars have beaten comfortably as well, mate. Well, aye, I know. Aye. It just it does show that the quality, because... I was looking at it, um, Genefield, who are top of the Premier in the the East beat Glasgow Uni 4-1, which pretty routine victory for them. But um, Glasgow Uni third division team, only a few goals. Then you look at, on the other side of that, you look at, for me, the Meda, who are having, you no, know, it's Sugarcoat, they're having a terrible season. If they're getting relegated last year, I touched on it last week, where they've won something like four out of 37 league games. 10-0 against Wigton and Bladdock. I know that South League's really poor. And then another one you've got was, I've seen it, Renfrew beating St Cuthbert's 8-0. Uh, six up at half time. Like the South teams are just so, so far behind as well. Even the East teams are just so far behind. But that's, I think for the med, I think that's probably, it could be an important one for them that they needed a wee bit of confidence uh, to, to build up some, some belief in themselves. Yeah, it's a big win, and you know what I think? Probably the old saying, Paul, in these cup games, it's just about getting through really yeah. into it, and that's maybe going back to mentioning Muscle Brand, whoever else said, probably, you don't know if teams have rested players yeah. and switched things around, but the bottom line is just get through into it and see yeah. where you're at in the next round. Exactly, and the South Cup is the hard, I'd say it's probably the hardest competition to win in yeah. Scottish football. I mean, even more so than yeah. Your big Scottish Cup where you're really looking at maybe Celtic, Rangers, Aberdeen, Hearts are the kind of only teams that really have yeah. a decent chance. Obviously, there's some other outliers that in the Premier League who might have a chance. But in this competition, there is so many good teams because you've got the Lone League teams in it as well. Yeah. Um, I was going to touch on two games for yourself that um, your former sides, Coburnie beating East Kilbride 5-1. No really any surprises in that. Um Aaron Conley plays far too much football, so he was always going to lose. <laughs> now that's that's just a wee joke between Azza and myself and Johnny Bailey and John Walker, who's commented on it last week. Right. But Coburnley, that's they put a wee dip in form recently. That's a good one for them. <laughs> I know. Listen again. I'm sure. I think it was away for him. One day they probably just went up there and just get through. Um, but it's a big one. I think. It's probably you fancied Coburn to get up there anyway, but 
No, they'll be. I don't think the draw's been major, has it, mate? So, no, no, as, no as of yet with this Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, your other former team that you managed, um, your local side, Greenock 2, Thornywood uh, now. Fleming's done a great job there. They're, I think brilliant. six or six or something they've, they've won. He's uh, really flying there now. He's, mate, I've been in touch with him the last couple of days, but he's honestly, I couldn't be happier for him, Paul. I know he what he puts in and stuff and Fleming's probably always was going to get down that road of managing and stuff just be the way he was as a player. I genuinely couldn't be happy for him because I know it'll be 24 7 with him and he's probably lucky that we're luckier than most days. His missus and Wayne's go to every game here in the West. I don't think it's much grief in the house of it. <laughs> Aye, because they're they're sitting at the moment um, third in the third division. Thornywood, I've touched on them before as well. They're sitting eighth in the first division, which two leagues above. Again, it's cup football. It's just about getting through. But I think that shows how they not are playing just now. Because even though Thornywood are a bit hot and cold, yeah, a tough side. They're a tough team to beat. Gorms has them. Yeah, difficult to beat generally. I don't think it's a massive surprise, Paul, seeing it as out. Obviously, if you're looking at it before the boys kick, won't be leads and stuff, former would have been favourites, but nobody really enjoys going down to Ravens, Craig, mm -hmm. as you know, mate. So I don't think it's a massive shock, but Fleming out to some confidence for that, surely, is it anyway? See, to be honest, you're saying that I like to go to Ravens, Craig. Oh, my uh, only Port Green up Derby I won was at Ravens. Because you were good at running. I <laughs> <laughs> just going to track and do it. <laughs> my only ever win against Green up with the Port was at Ravens, Craig, and I won right. the other two games I played there with Rob Roy when the Port used to play there years ago. Yeah. But I, a um, couple of results to touch on. Drumchapel beating Johnson Borough 1 0. The Borough, two men sent off. So, I've not looked at a great deal because I was I was so busy shopping for my um, new floor yesterday that I missed a lot right. of stuff that happened. But the drum were speaking to Hopi during the week. It was saying they were really struggling in terms of bodies. They were had bodies right. and through injuries, whatever, and they had to kind of pull boys in at the end. So he wasn't hundred percent sure it was going to go. But I was get get Dale Esblin sent off and Kyle Lafferty get sent off for a second booting as he was being taken off. So I'm not sure whether that meant that the other player couldn't come on. And also Murdy got himself a red card as well. I'm not sure right. why, but it seemed to be... Uh, it's, I don't think the Borough are doing as well as they would like to. And maybe this is good for them where it allows them to focus yeah. on the league. But it's another good one for the drum who seem like they're struggling to find find any chance to lose the now. Aye, uh, they're on a very good form. And I'd, I'd keep an eye on them. Probably through Slick just to see how Slick's going mm. on and stuff. But they're flying, bro, aren't they? Really? They'll be one of them teams that's probably looking to win that cup as well, Paul, get at later stages. And it's a tough tie for both of them. They probably wanted to avoid each other that early in the cup as well. So, no, fair play to Hope over there. It seems after they've settled really well in the league. And um, I'm sure they'd want them the next round as well, mate. Ah, it's a tough tie. Clay Bank, top of the league, obviously. A very routine win for them, seven one against Cali Locos. Yeah. They're another one now, but it's hard to see where they're gonna lose. So I think I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think if the drum and Kai Bank had both lost yesterday, which obviously never happened and was unlikely to happen, then they'd be playing each other in two weeks, which I think would have been a massive game. Right. I don't think they're gonna be playing each other for a bit longer. Yeah. But I think that's it's hard to see right now where Clyde Bank are going to lose because they just seem to be bordering steamrolling everybody and they've added so well this season that it's it's been a ridiculously impressive start for them this season. I was actually planning to go over there with Nicky yesterday to watch, but I changed our plans when they watch the Celtic game. But they're flying heat. Obviously, I speak to him every day, Nicky, and it is a bit mostly about football and stuff, so... He says that they're in a right good place. I think if you even just look at their team lines at the weekend, every weekend now, their bench is so yeah. strong. I don't know if maybe Moff's targeted like, more stronger in depth and stuff, but maybe last season or season before, there maybe two or three from the bench that would make an impact. I think you could look at their bench now, mate, and mm. anybody could go on that team, no matter if he changes it about, which I know he has been doing. 
Um, they look very strong on paper as well. So he's banging. I think I said to Nicky last week, and we we're talking like, is the winter's going to kick in and stuff? Their, their games will be on as well mm-hmm. when other Aye. teams are off. And they just seem as if they've got up momentum just now, mate, where it's it's stupid to say, but you would if you're them now, you would probably be disappointed if you don't go and win a league after the start of that. But I know it's early, I'm not naive that way, but they would, I think, if you finish above them, you're going to win it, aren't you, really? I, I think that is it. No, that like Moff's ever been in any danger of losing his job because he's always been consistent with the fact yeah. that they are a top four or five team his whole time there. Um, but to me, it looks like every year they've just added another wee bit and another wee bit. This year, I think they've went a bit further and they've pushed the ball yeah. out and got in really experienced quality players. And I think sometimes that's the benefit of having a manager who is there for four or five years where yeah. He's able to build that platform through the years and it's a gradual build-up where most of the players have played together and you're only adding in a couple and it makes it much easier uh, to transition with it. Totally agree. Um, I think what he's done as well, if you look at it, he's, he's kind of signed a spine of a team who have yeah, 100%. been there or thereabouts. Obviously, Big Leishman, we know what he's done at this level. A boy in midfield, is it Cairns, maybe? I Dean Cairns, cracking oh. player. Uh, and then Samson up front as well, do you know what I mean? So they've, he's probably targeted certain, certain areas, um, and the likes of the two Nicky's there as well and stuff, they've got up, but a magic, aren't they? They can Aye. win games and be tight. I tell you, it was some goal that, uh, that we Nicky scored last week. Aye. I'm, waiting for Clyde Bank. <laughs> I'm waiting for Clyde Bank to put it onto their YouTube so I can steal it and put it on our social Aye. media. He's not uh, mentioned it, by the way. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he has, not and Aye. to be fair, he's still the, he still can't score as many good goals as Nicky Little does. No, I don't think anybody will, will they, big man? Nah, it's ridiculous. Um, another result, there's two results that really stuck out for me yesterday. One of them because I was maybe critical uh Eglinton saying that with the resources that they have, the catchment area they have, they've really not been doing great. The mid-table is not awful, but... I think there's a lot more potential in the club to go and take five off Bonneton, two leagues above them yesterday. Bonneton yeah. haven't had the best of seasons. But speaking to one of my former players for Craig Mark that's there the other day, he said there's been a couple of games where it's been a goal and they've been close, they've missed chances. It's no quite as bad as it appears. That's a great win for Eglinton yesterday, but a really bad defeat for Bonneton. I am... Um... I did notice that it stood out for me. I was looking at the results last night and this morning, mate, and maybe a wee bit of rivalry down there as well, maybe. Mm-hmm. But Not too far. No, a big victory. And I meant to say to you, you don't know if you were going to mention, did you see Gibby's interview? No, I've not seen it. After the Rob Roy game? No. Hey, you need to get a watch. He's not happy at all. I was laughing because I just know what he's like watching. I think, was it Royal Albert that beat Who won the beat Royal Albert, aye. Get a watch. He's not happy at all. And... You know Gibby anyway, I he's just, well, aye. he wasn't happy, but again, getting back to it, he probably wakes up this morning, they're in a heart, it was a potential banana skin, but just get a wee watch, because he's, he's a Gibby that we both know, and ah, he he's, a he's some man who Gibby. He's a winner, isn't he? Well, we're looking at a, a result that was a bit of a surprise for me, no a massive, massive shot, but a bit of a surprise, Dorai beating Glen Afton 2-0 down in yep. Newcomlock. Which has now led to this is Sunday afternoon, like I said, so maybe an hour and a half ago. Um Caddy's no longer the Glen Afton manager, which I wish him all the best. He's been on the show, he's a mate. I wish him all the best. But results haven't been great for him after a good start as well. But that's a massive win for for Dorai. I think Chris Wilson will be really happy with, with the fact that he were able to go and get two two goals and a clean sheet away at Glen Afton. Massive result for the Rai. For Ryan's sake, I think it should have been forgotten the job he done last season. Mm-hmm. I, can't know. I watched this when he was on with yourself. I think he done himself a bit of injustice as well, by the way, because what a player he was. Nah, he was um, good, don't, don't like to see anybody losing their job. I don't know what's happened, if he's wrapped it, Paul, or whatever, but guys like him should be in a game because he is a good fit, big guy and a good guy as well. When we went down to Craig Mark with Cole Burnley, in the Scottish Cup, he couldn't have been any more welcome than myself and stuff. So, wish him all. Honestly, a good, good guy, and hopefully, whatever he feels right. So, he maybe need a bit of time away. Nah, um, 
but whatever's right for him and good luck to him. Um, Darvo, we've mentioned quite a bit recently. It's no a secret how disappointing the results have been in the league, and I think they've been they've won th- I think three at the last four or four at the last five, and had a draw thrown in there as well. So they've picked up a wee bit of form, but for them it's been cup results uh, and then yeah. the draw against shots in the league. So it's not really been points for them on on the board. But three two against Whitlitz yesterday after extra time. Whitlitz, I think Whitlitz are a good side. I think that they'll go yeah. up this year. But I think for Mick and at Darvo, they probably need to just keep putting their wins together to build a bit yeah. of confidence and get the team to gel together because it's a lot of new players they've brought in. I I, I did, I think, was it Paul that beat the other week in the cup? And you're thinking, aye, aye. they need to turn them results into kind of league ones. I thought that myself, but I kind of got an idea of how they play and stuff. Um, and I don't know if it's maybe just players a wee while to adjust the way Mick's want to set his teams up and They've signed a boy for his pals with my boy, actually, Aidan Martin. so he's mm-hmm. down there now. I noticed he's chipped in with a couple of goals, but I think Darvo is just going to take patience with them with making stuff anyway, rather than jump the gun if the things are not going their way, but like my gut feeling with him is he'll turn it around in there and do quite well. Uh, I think he's, he's too good a manager, not he? In yeah. the Premier League as well, we've got Beath beating Armadale Thistle 4-1. Um, I think Armadale were one up. B left it reasonably late and then just ran out of the top of them at the end. It's a funny season they're having because I've spoken about it before where it's hard for them. Like a couple of years ago, you lose Josh Fowler. And you're like, how do you replace that? Then you get Kieran Divers who somehow manages to score. Yeah. Excuse me, he scored even more goals. And then you lose him to St. Caddox. And then how do you replace that again? It's it's so difficult for, for clubs like Bead who probably pay reasonable money, but don't have quite the same budget that other teams in the league have. But that's a good he's, one for them in terms of getting themselves back on track. I, um, I think you hit a nail on the head with players have lost over the last couple of years. It's probably deep down very, very frustrating for mm-hmm. the management team doing any stuff, but they're sure they're a bit resilient and they just keep bouncing back. They hang the winning league this year, I don't, to be honest yeah. with you, but they're still not to be a team that can write off it any week at all. And maybe they'll they'll maybe target a cup this year as well. I don't I can't mm-hmm. even remember before winning a cup apart from the Scottish a few years back mm-hmm. and stuff. So <clears throat> excuse me, maybe that uh, is what they're focusing on a wee bit more this season, Paul. I I think so because we'll touch on it when we're talking about the leagues, but they're already what they've got. Uh, so we look at 11. I think they're already 10 points behind Clyde Bank after seven games. And it's yeah. the way Clyde Bank are going, that's very hard to, to pull back. Um, Cowinnan beat Muirkirk 3 2 after extra time. Muirkirk are having a much better season. They had their first defeat last year. That's two in the bounds. But I think this one, you see their team a league above you, a good side yeah. in Cowinnan. It's no, there's no shame in losing at them at extra time at their place. But they've basically, they brought in pretty much most of the Benz under-20s team last se- for last season right. on your cut side. I think they're doing a great job. And for what I've heard, their management team, basically, I was talking to somebody during the week that knows the manager there, and he was saying, he's probably need a wee bit of experience in. And he's like, nah, I'm just going to go with the, the boys I've got. I think he has brought in one or two older heads. Right. But yeah, like, I'm just going to go with what I've got. And it's kind of paying off so far. You start right. to see how it goes later in the season when the weather's not great and it's yeah. it's kind of roll the sleeves up territory whether the young boys will be able to continue that cracking form they've got. No, they've done well. I've kept an eye on that league as well, mate. And I think they maybe dropped points for the first time last weekish. Aye. Maybe they... Listen, it's probably one of them jobs. I don't know the guys in charge, but it must be a hard place to attract mm-hmm. players to nothing against the place or the team or the club or that, but it's one of them ones you think it's the other end of the world if you're speaking to people, do you know what I mean? So, fair play to them. They've maybe, as you say, just go with my youth and just let's see where we end up. I think as well, if you're bringing in a team of boys who have played together for a few years, it's like I touched on with Clyde Bank, when you're only adding one or two in every year, yeah. it's really not a big deal because you kind of have a system that you want to play and everybody understands what everybody does. 
And that'll be the same when you're bringing in a team like that. You saw it with, with Royal Albert last year when they brought the, Ram, the Les Mahigo Saturday the Mon team in, flying right after that. And I think they've lost a few and they've had to bring in quite a few and you see now that they're starting to struggle because it's a transition. But another team for, you're talking about Muir Kirk's hard to attract players. Another team that's hard to attract players with enough experience, Craig Mark. Season's just gone from bad to worse. The league form is obviously, they're losing heavily most weeks. And then yesterday, losing 6-1 to Luger, who are a league below. It's really, really hard to see anything but a horribly long, difficult season uh, for Craig Mark. It must it can't have been nice of again keeping an eye on results and stuff. It just seems as if they're going through one of them periods where absolutely nothing can go right for you. Um, and it seems to be when the day loss a game, it's a bit of a doing as well. So that's a place I know you were obviously involved in there. It's a good footballing place to get into. It's Aye. again I try to attract players, you know better than me, Paul, but it just seems as if they're probably thinking right now. How do we turn this corner? Because it seems as if nothing can go right for them. And hopefully they do turn that around because there's obviously potential down there with club and stuff. It's, it's honestly like such a good club. The committee are brilliant. The fans are great. The town really cares about the club because that is yeah. the, the kind of hub of the, the town. But like when I was speaking to some players, it's hard because you're like, well, we train in Kilmarnock, so that's not too bad. But then you're like, people are saying, oh, I don't want to go down to Edo Yeah. And then you say, all right, well, what will it take to get you doing? And they're like, 80, 90 pounds a week. And you're like, well, you're not coming in. <laughs> that's, no, that's just not going right. to happen. And that was part of the reason, I've mentioned on here before, part of the reason that that we struggled and found it difficult and had to walk away then. Because you're like, we can't bring players down that we need for the level because... Yeah, you have to pay stupid money that the club don't have. I mean, the club uh, give you everything they can, and that's something that me and Caddy was speaking about in his time there. And he yeah. obviously done a tremendous job for these these couple of years there. But you're like, you can't you can't give boys eighty and ninety pound a week, take them down to the second division to be no going to win it, and that's the level yeah. where. So, ah, it's it is difficult. I'm trying to see any other results. Rossville, actually, Rossville losing 2-0 to Cali Braves. Cali Braves top of the Lowland League. Josh, I spoke to him this morning um, just to see how it went, basically, and he sent me a couple, <laughs> of, a couple of wee videos for their VO. Right. They've, they've missed a penalty. They've had a couple of chances, like a couple of really good chances. And you're like, that's a, that's a decent result when you're playing a team five yeah. leagues above you or four leagues above you, whatever it is. That's a very decent result, particularly when it looks like at certain points you could have got yourself in front of the game. Because Cali Braves, we don't know whether they've rested players or no. Yeah. But they're a good side who could potentially be playing League Two football next year. Well, I definitely. And on that fixture before a boys kicks, probably a gap if you look at league positions and whatever. And it's huge, you know what I mean? So Cali Braves probably just heart, but they're in the heart. And, um, they're probably a team that most of what I avoid as well, Paul. Next round, I would think, mate. Aye, I mean, the thing is, you're saying it there, but there's like probably 70 odd places between the two of them in the league. That's yeah, one difference. Um, yeah. Just to finish us up on uh, the south of Scotland action, Talbot beating Bonus Athletic 4 1 away from home. It's not a result I'm shocked with. Talbot should be beating uh, Bonus Athletic. No United who are in the the Lone League. Yeah. But that for me is probably an important result for Tablet. Uh, Tablet. Talbot after um losing to Lossiemouth last week at home, which was very, oh, very gosh. surprising result for me. But I it's the kind of usual. They're just the they bounce back pretty quickly for these things. Yeah. yeah. That was a massive shock last week. I seen that score. I don't think anybody would have predicted that, but I'm sure Tucker's been here before and they know how to turn their corner quickly, they and I know I'll keep saying it, but I don't think you would fancy drawing him in no. the next round as well because no. they've got a habit in cups I just mm. you look at it in the later rounds and they always seem to be here. Well they're the they're the first team ever to win this competition. They went and beat yeah, right, yeah, position in the yeah. final. I don't know if it was Spartans or no, but aye, uh, it's it's definitely a team you want to avoid. 
Um, we'll move on to talking about league. I know there was no league games this week, but just looking at it, we've, we've touched on Clyde Bank and Drum Chapel, and see a team that me and Dak, when we were doing this together, we would talk about it. Largs, very much a team. Obviously, it's you know a lot of the boys down there and stuff. Sitting in fourth position just now, and only lost one out of seven. They're a team who won't win the league, but have such an impact on everything about them. And I think that they're one of the most important teams in the league, to be honest with you. I think he's... I, I would take the thing that he's underrated the job that Arnie's done there, because for me, it's been phenomenal. Yeah. Um, what he's done, if you're talking about money and stuff, I'm sure they'll know one of the highest budgets-wise in that league as well. But whatever he does just seems to work in... You know, when you play against one of his teams that you probably only need, need to outwork them or match them, what great to take anything. I think he's done an unbelievable job down there as well. And goes about his business a wee bit quietly as well, doesn't he? And Aye. Seems to, sign, seems to sign the right type for him and the club down there and stuff. So he's done a phenomenal job. And I think probably now, Paul, any team that go to Largs in that league would... Probably to a point, I get mm, hard to believe it, but hard to be a point if you've been honest, mate. Um, brilliant job, and just seems to another one getting back to it, maybe losses a couple of players here and there mm-hmm. for mere money over the end of each season. But does they complain? And no, a very good side and a very good manager. I, I think that I'm surprised, maybe it has happened, and you just don't hear about it, but I'm surprised teams. Big teams don't try and take him away from him. Because, like you said... I'm amazed, mate. I've said it to people over the years, and maybe they have, and it's just not for him, but he's surely somebody's looked at the job he's done, you know what I mean? And maybe it's, maybe maybe it's just it's, hard, yeah. Maybe it's because people will message him and he'll not get back to them. So if you're listening, oh, right, is, yeah. is that is how it is, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Former teammates, and he does that to me, patches me. Right. But um, I, I think that we talk about that, they took, they're the only team to beat Drumchapel so far this season as well. And I expected them to beat Drumchapel that night. And even though I think the drum are a very good side, I just wasn't surprised that Gundun to Largs that, that they beat the drum. And see when Clyde Bank go down there and stuff, that's when it starts to see, see if you can go down there and you can go and get yourself wins. That's when yeah. you're maybe showing that you're a team that can really go and try and push on. Yeah. Um, a team for me who I think are, are underachieving, Matt, well, two teams in the Premier League, Cumnock have won two, drawn one and lost three. Now, I've heard for quite a few sources, and again, it's, uh, it's the money chat and all that, and that they're throwing crazy money about for this level, and they're right. really no, I just don't think they're getting the results out yet that, that they're probably looking for for their investment. And St. Caddox as well, where obviously... At, I think most people know they've got quite a bit of money too, but I'll, I almost feel like it's a wee bit different with St. Caddox. It's like, I think Martin Fellows wants to play a, like a lot of football and this happened to them last year. They, they had a slow start and then they just kicked on and I think they finished second last year or maybe third and there was so much quality in there. And I think once big divers starts, starts turning in some goals, they'll be a team you'll see flying up the leagues. I think... They've got too many good players for it not to click eventually, aren't they? Um, but they're probably a bit frustrated about the gap that's appearing from the top to mm-hmm. where they are just now because it's a lot of points in that league to claw back. But I think on paper, St. Caddox, it should come good eventually. Do you know what I mean? They've got too many good players in paper. And as you said, the boy you got dive or a striker, they'll maybe have to run sooner or later and uh, find the form that he did at Beef, mate. Aye, both of the sides won yesterday with St. Caddox winning 7 0 against Urban Vicks, Cumnock beating Lanark 3 1, which actually I think Lanark are, um, Lanark are a really good side. So I think that's a decent result for Cumnock to just get yourself through. Um, in the first division, Arthur they beat Easterhouse 3 0 yesterday in the Cup. Um, a pretty standard result um, based on the fact that they're top of the first division. Easterhouse are having yeah. a good season in the fourth division. Arthurly, you look at it like they've got like Scott Anson back, and Anson's been playing for about six hundred years and just seems to score goals all the time. Glen Cairn flying in the league, still a only team in the first division undefeated. Then Renfrew, who we touched on earlier, had have a win 
uh, winning yesterday, Cumbernauld winning yesterday as well. All these teams who are the top four, the Rock winning yesterday as well, who are top five, yeah. they're, they're kind of, they're in the habit of winning just now. And I, I think that you might see a couple of teams pulling away now because I think there's a, I think there's a good bit of quality in that first division this year. It's a tough league, isn't it, though? Um, probably, I think Rutherland Glen would be my touch to maybe win it, Paul, but Arfley will be run about there as well. It's, it's a tough, tough league. Aye. Any team on their day can beat each other. It's a very tough league to get out and get in the Premier League, but it seems like they've got a bit of momentum now on Arfley as well, are not they? And, Aye. Um, probably on paper, the club it should be any Premier League always, but I think they'll go up, to be honest with you, mate, um, and I think Mullergoyne and whoever else it will be, but a tough league, mate. I wouldn't like to predict fixtures that on a no. Saturday anyway, results. I think you're right. I think Arthur and Glencairn, in my opinion, will be two that will go up, and then you'll have Renfrew, Cumbernauld, St Caddox, Coburn, and I actually think Coburn and uh, Rob Roy and Peters Hill have all still got a say in it as well, even though you're looking at Peters Hill. Yeah. The, the three of them, 9th, 10th and 11th. But even down to there, all these teams will be fighting for it. It's, it's, it is, like you said, so tight. And yeah. I'd like to see Coburn doing a bit better. Um, I think that it's Ben, he's a, he's a good guy, knows his stuff. And they're a good club, obviously, you know this for, for your time there. Yeah. But there's there's teams in that I, league that who, who should really be looking to push on a bit more. There's probably a handful in that league, Paul, that say we should be a Premier League club, do you know what I mean? Because Burnley's definitely one of them as well, but very, very hard to get out of that league, mate, as I know myself. And I, I would like to see Burnley back in the Premier League, um, but they seem a wee bit, not inconsistent, but it seems as if they go on a wee run and maybe then go on a wee run, it's not in their favour, but... I'm sure they'll have a big say in whoever does go up anyway, mate. Um, I've seen, you've probably seen the condition of their partner in this season again. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And, I know. Um, but honestly, they're a club, but I check the results every week and hopefully they, they do do well. But their fans and stuff probably deserve them being back in that top league eventually, mate. I think the top league benefits for it, but I also think there are so many good sides from the Premier to the the kind of middle of the the first division where really, like there is so many sides that could be in that Premier League and there's very few I know Davo had a really slow start and same with shots. There's there's almost nobody that really you think, all right, well you've got them, you know you're gonna go and beat them this week. And I think that's Aye. that's how it is so tough. Um moving on to the second division. We touched on Muir Kirk. They've um, played eight one seven drawn one 27 goals for, 10 again. So I think that that shows that they're firing in all cylinders, but <clears throat> but defensively, they are pretty sound. And I think at this level, if you can keep your goals against to roughly one a game, you know you're in with a right good shout, uh, a damn well. You've got Nielsen and Whitlitz as well, who are right in there. What, uh, Nielsen second, three points behind your Kirk. Whitlitz yeah. two further back than that, but they have a game in hand. But a team for me, I think that, a really good side who don't get mentioned a great deal. It's Lark Call. Um, again, they're, they're yep. themselves. They've conceded nine and seven games. They win their game in hand. They could potentially be in second place. When we played them last year at Craig Mark, I thought they were one of the best teams we played. They had a right. wee bit about them and they're a really good side. And again, they're another one. They got a 4-0 win. Um, I'm sorry, that's Lark. I had a 4-0 win against Thornton Hibs yesterday. I think that you're probably looking at down to sixth place with Coastside Rangers, any of them could go up. I don't feel that you've got the same... I think there's a wee difference in quality with the top teams in the second division. Splitting, uh, teams splitting the two leagues, can I say? I, I think it's a wee aye. bit different for the first division, but I I think that the teams will all be in the hunt come the end of the season. Yeah, that's, that could be a league you're looking at, Paul, going into February, March and April, and you still don't know how it's going to end up, uh, promotion-wise and stuff, aye, so... Lap Colgan back to him. It's a good place to go up there and play, isn't it? It feels all right. Got a football ground and stuff when you got there. So they've got a really good fan base as well when you got there, mate. They seem to be come out of their numbers. But I think that'll be a league that I don't think somebody will run away with it. I know most cups in good form, but I probably I think you'll find after the new year you'll still be hard to call that. 
Uh, I, I do believe that Muirkirk will start to drop some more points just because they have possibly a bit of inexperience in their team, but there appears to be enough quality that they're going to keep themselves in the hunt for it. And it will, like you said, it will be interesting and, and tight. Yeah. Um, Owen Lark Hall, a fun fact, since everybody would be desperate to hear this, that's where I scored my last ever goal. Right. My last ever goal at that level. Scored a penalty. Right. I think we beat them, I think it was a winner when we beat them 2-1 or something when I was at the, right. the Ants. So, so there you go. If it ever comes up in a pub quiz, he's on. I was wondering goal. about that as well. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. I know you were talking to Nick <laughs> Lowe about it all day. <laughs> um, third division, the Thorn, top of the league played eight one five drawn three. They, that's a club I really like. The Thorn, no, I don't really know anybody there, but they're kind of pretty local to me. But I just. I think what they how they're going about it has been so good for the fourth division to get themselves promoted in their first year. Now they're in a great position to get promoted again. I know it's early doors, but they're a great position, nearly a third of the way through the season, sitting top of the league. And yeah. I, they're just they've taken a lot of boys, local boys as well. So it's not like they're out firing hunters of money about to people, and it's it's impressive. Um, again as well, we've got Greenock. Um, your former club that if they can win their game in hand they'll go into second place ahead of Perthshire but I think Perthshire it's good to see them doing well because the last few years have been really tough for them and Billy the miser has been there for forever and he knows his way about this level he's probably the scariest guy I think at this level because <laughs> I don't even see when I did the vlogs and I'd go to the games I didn't even bother asking I didn't even bother speaking to him because I was like he just, just hits the He just stares uh, at you and you're like, right, you man, I'll just leave you to it. All right. Um, that's a good league. See, talking about form, Paul, I think, like, see, like, some of the amateur teams that stepped up. Um, I think they're a benchmark, aren't they, really, uh, for how to do things properly on an Arthur Park. And obviously, me and you were close to the amateur game as well. They were always strong at art level, mm -hmm. so... I think they've took to the transition brilliantly as well. And there's nothing stopping them, by the way, to be no. get up leagues and stuff uh, the next couple of years. And green up as well, but looking to get out of that league, I know they shouldn't probably be playing the third division, but it's not as easy as people think, is it, as well? But um, I think forms the team, again, back to what I said, mate, these teams that want to progress on and off the park, go and look at them and see how they do stuff, do you know what I mean? No. Nah. And I think, seeing you, you mentioned the amateur teams that have come up, the Thorn is the only amateur team who were a proper good amateur team to come into the setup. So aye, aye, like aye. And it's, it isn't any disrespect, but I know Glenvale have done well and have got themselves promoted last year. And, but you've got like Glenvale's who, they didn't have a great amateur team. St Peter's, no great amateur team. Eglinton, no great amateur team. But the Thorn were a good amateur team who we're competing for, for top leagues yeah. and stuff. And that's where it's possibly a wee bit disappointing where I know they, they missed out and for whatever reason, but you had like um St. Pat's tried to get in last year who you know a team like St. Pat's, very similar to Thorn, would yeah. add a lot of quality to the level. Definitely. But the Thorn tick all the boxes. They've got a good side. They've got a great setup for, for the, kind of, the kids all the way through. So I think that they are, like you said, the benchmark. Team for me who are a bit funny. Um, Thrive, we never touched on it earlier. They beat the Benz 4 2 yesterday. Oh, I've seen they're, that, aye. they're sitting in fifth place, played six, one four, drawn one, lost one. So, excuse me, they win their games in hand. They actually they would go top of the league. So, they're still in my right shout. Just, they've put a lot in it and coming from the south to try and get themselves yeah. as far up as possible. They are a good side. I mean, I'm actually I'm forgetting who they beat recently. They beat another team recently. I'm actually going to check back my scores. They beat another team recently who were right. a, a good side, and it just shows that they are a good team. But surprisingly enough, they lost to Glenvale, um, which I. Uh, but uh, they're a good side, and I think that they. Uh, are it's good. a big result beating Ben Bob. That was another one who stood out for me as well. Um, I think it was Dunia Winter as well at Three. So it was three by. Aye, no, a big result, and is it a massive, massive shock on paper, maybe leagues separating each other, but 
not really for me. Nah, nah, I would agree. It's no, it's no one that that really shocks you. Yeah. I'm trying to look back at my scores here to see if I can see. Ugh, I don't know where it is, but I'm sure they had a decent result uh, recently. We'll move on to finish up on the the fourth division, yeah. um, which is the best division. Love it, love it for <laughs> some reason. We've got Knightswood who are flying. They had another one yesterday. Um, where were they? I can't even remember who they were playing. There was that many games for yesterday. But they had a good one yesterday. Oh, it was Hart Hill they beat, sorry. Um, right. Which is expected because Hart Hill are the best. But that's that's eight eight or nine games they've played this season. One every one. Seven out of seven in the league. 26 goals scored. Eight conceded. It's hard to see at this time anybody who will stop them. They're just... Promotion looks like a guarantee at this uh, point. But then I'm you're looking at Ross Fail. Sorry, on you go, mate. No, sorry, mate. Ross Fail, who are flying as well. Kello, who we touched on earlier with a decent result. And then our old club, the Port, who I think it's good to see. The Port won 4 3 yesterday against West Park in the yeah. Cup. And I went down and watched them last week uh, against East Bride. And I think Tam's. Tam's starting to get them to click a wee bit more. They, they, look, a, uh, they look a bit better now, and it's, it's good to see them doing better. I was talking to him on Friday night, actually, um, just briefly, but uh, I think he's, he's plenty doing a wee bit, but they're doing well, aren't they? Um, Aye. I thought in that league as well, I think Knights would I'd be amazed if they don't got Paul. They've signed mm. a bit of experience in there, quality as well. Um, Dan Muller's there, isn't he? Yep, he is, aye. Boy Marshall. Um, I think Wee Coogan's is in there now, I've aye, seen as I well. Mean, I mean, that's the uh, thing. He's, Coogan's played for you. Did he play for you, Coburnley? He was there briefly at Coburnley, but I, but I know him as well. So, um, And Ryan Craig, it used to be. That's right, know, aye. Ryan. Ryan. So, quality-wise, they should, they should go out of the league with what they've got there as well. And, Fair play to them as well, Darren and that going over there and still playing. He shouldn't be playing at that level, if I've been no. honest. But um, I would be amazed if they don't go up, Paul, and probably if you finish above them, you would win the league. I reckon. I but um, at Port, um, they probably need to get out of that league this year, don't they? But Aye. it's not as easy as people think as well. But I think. I, I reckon the Port will go up, to be honest with you, and with that part going all the time as well, and during the winter and stuff. So, good luck to Tam, or to ex teammate of mine as well, and probably a guy that I did think would get into management, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, so, good luck to him, and I know Big McWatters is in there with him as well. Um, be interesting to see how quiet a big man is in the touchline you were doing the other week. I, I, I like to see that, but do you know what surprised me? Because obviously, I played against. Tam, when he was at Greenock and we had like the Port Greenock derbies and stuff, and Tam was very passionate. Was when yeah. he, he's, a, he's a bit more mellow at the side of the park than I thought he would be. He's a, he is, he's quite a, speaking to him, I've spoke to him a few times, he's quite a level character when you talk to him, but when you play again, I, he was he was quite fiery as well. But uh, No, I would, I would have probably thought that he would be calm, to be honest with you. He's kind of a guy on and off the park as well, where Got a wee bit about him on the part when he played, but he was probably a calming influence. So I don't know if Big Alec will do shouting ball in for Tam, but does, Big Man's not shy anyway. He just stands there at the side with because uh, I've been down to watch Frank, I think three times this season. And uh, he stands at the side with shorts on, shorts and t shirt, and just the arms folded. <laughs> and just shouts at people like that. And Tam kinda Tam's a bit more low key, but uh, it's clearly what you know what see it'd, it'd be fair to you, he's a right good fit my man and he's done a lot locally as well for mm. clubs over the years, been involved in stuff and um I know he had a big actually good enough subject, a big help in look McCown's development and stuff uh, as yeah, well. Yeah. So uh, you know a big man, guys like that should be in a game anyway, shouldn't they? And, uh, I th- um, see how the port go. I I think like you said the port for me I think the port are should be their level should be like second division level that's kind of where they are and I think but what I would say I like they're trying to do a lot of the right things after uh, kind of after the park and even look at clubs like New Mains where the league on their um, YouTube channel a while back did a wee bit of coverage on on New Mains. 
And it's like, I know their results aren't they brilliant. They were unfortunate yesterday losing in penalties. But you can see clubs like that, they're trying to do better and they're trying to bring yeah. the community in, which is really important because the port for me, the port get decent enough crowds. I think they've, the crowds are better than our well, time there. I think they're better now than they were when we were there. I think it's, it's a good catchment area for nah, players as well, Paul, because it's not up your neck, Edwards and stuff, and Paisley going into Glasgow. It's not a million miles away, can do nah. that motorway to Park Lead and stuff. So they'll have ambitions probably. And as you said, I think the, the day they stuff off at Park now as well, don't they? And, I know. Um, I'd like to see Tam doing well, honestly, and there's no rivalry really between Greenland and Port for me. It's, I'd like to see Tam doing well, and hopefully he does, but he says to me the night, it's 24 7, as you know, mate. So, nah. Well, that's the thing is, you were the man that, that brought me down to the port and started my love for them. That's right, aye. But what I'll say yeah. is, I'm no a bed hopper like all yous. All you <laughs> scumbags doing both. Oh, the amount of people uh-huh. Doing that happened too often, didn't oh, it? Go so I did it. Club. I mean, uh, I guess I, I have it never sat It never sat right with me either, to be honest with you, mate. It's one of the other, isn't it? Nah, it's just Hunter's a bed hopping and that. I, I got the opportunity to play down at Greenock before, and I was yeah. like, I can't do it. I, like, I, I can't do it. I just love a port too much. It's no, we get on that one. It happened too often, but. Nah, there's hundreds of them. Need need quite as much as uh, no, I hope he's listening to it, uh, Ross Cairns, who just dives between whatever team wants him at that time. Is he? Is uh, he playing? <laughs> he's unbelievable. That must be about his ninth spare, by the way. When I'm going to call him out and all, so me and Cairns get on really well. And uh, when I was doing last week, you know what he's like. Cairns is just the funniest, daftest guy ever, and like he does stuff. And he turned around and looked at me last week during the game and just right. gave me a pure smile. And I was like, <laughs> Guernsey, you've made like a five yard pass, mate. Uh, I, I, I didn't, honestly, I've, I didn't know he was back playing up there. Uh, um, he's done his first share at both clubs, hasn't he? Uh, he's, uh, he's an absolute stop out. But look, that'll do us for this week, Tam. Thank you very much for, for well, coming. I appreciate, I appreciate that, it. And, uh, Thank you. I, Everybody, thanks for watching as always. Like the episode and subscribe to the channel. And go out and support your local team next weekend. Take care. Cheers.